Just bear some sun with your national anthem. As we go towards the next general election, how the political parties will be strengthened and how the office of registrar will come in in terms of uh, different legal reforms. Uh, looking at what we did in the just concluded uh, general election. So we are happy that we are missing, we are meeting today and uh, especially just one year after the general election. We also note that we now have a state department that coordinates par parliamentary affairs and registration and we know for sure this time we are going to fast track. In the last election we had uh, the political parties act amended seven months to the general election which was a very tall order for ORPP and political parties to implement. That's why we'll be very glad to see the, the, these particular laws passed. I also want to say that we cannot understate the importance of the referendum bill and uh, the other bills, the campaign finance bill that we, are, we intend to review because those are laws that have been long studied and are very important to us, specifically I want to talk about the, briefly about the, the campaign finance bill. It has been, just been presented to us by the Kenya uh, law reform, which we are going to have in plenary. But I want to say it has been postponed three times. Uh, and I think it's the high time. Whether we want to amend the areas that we think that are a bit controversial, so that we are able to implement. Otherwise, because it is a law that has been passed by Parliament, it's always good to implement the law once it is passed. Now more than ever, we must, so, we must have solidarity and shared responsibility in this journey to promote good governance. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this being a multi-sectoral gathering geared towards strengthening electoral laws and governance, I wish to draw your attention to Article 89, as read with Section 2 of the fifth schedule of the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission Act 2011, with regard to the protected constituencies which ceased to exist in the next five months. Appoint the commissioners to begin the boundary delimitation process and address the fate of unprotected constituencies. Otherwise, it will remain a ticking time bomb. So what is it you said, uh, time bomb? It's simple, we live in this country. If you are to touch each of those 40 constituencies and say because you have not met the threshold, X, or indeed touch those which are saved and you say you have five months within which to, to make sure something is done by the IBC, I can tell you, let's all decide as Kenyans, you give somebody a right, you can withdraw it such a sacrosanct right to representation and to withdraw it. So it's a matter of really realigning our thinking and the reality on the ground. These are constituencies and I'm sure they will need to be saved. Not just saved, they will need to be there. A seven member selection panel to recruit the IABC chairperson and six commissioners was formed. We've invited them to come and have dialogue. Because otherwise, if you are to proceed the way you have proposed, then it makes no sense of what you are trying to do to put this country together again. A country which is divided right in the middle after what happened during the elections. And you say that one side will just proceed and carry out their mandate and put in commissioners who will pre the 2027 election. Of course, it, can hap it cannot happen. So this gathering, it's aware that this is one of the matters we are canvassing at the National Dialogue Committee. In the interest of preserving the integrity of the talks and the interest of the good, uh, of the good faith that we've been able to establish between the previously antagonistic parties, I choose not to delve deeply into this matter because these are matters we are canvassing very actively. I will however broadly state what is already in public domain regarding the reconstitution of the IABC. It must be an inclusive process that is not dictated by the executive 
or Kenya Kwanza. Our preferred model remains as of now, it can vary depending on the outcome of our consultations. Kenyans are keen on an electoral body that is democratic, transparent, and accountable in both internal and external operations, and that enjoys the full confidence of our people. But there are problems with the IBC and its own credibility. The so-called mix-up that led to postponement of uh, gubernatorial elections in Mombasa in Kakamega last year is still a manifestation of a problem with transparency, accountability, and professionalism at that body. That we could not access the server because it would compromise its other operations. Indeed, it went against a direct a directive of the highest court in the land, the Supreme Court. They said they couldn't do that. That says a lot about the kind of deal IBC got our country into. We have modified electoral laws to allow political parties to independently tally the results. But as we have witnessed in Kenya, both in, 20, in the 2017 and 2022 technology, uh, technologies getting compromised and results altered. This has severely damaged the credibility of IEBC. According to the Gallup poll, 64% of Kenyans did not have confidence in the honesty of elections as we prepared for 2022 polls. Similarly, the Afrobarometer survey shows that 24% of Kenyans know that elections are not free at all, are not at all free and fair. A further 18% thought that elections may be free and fair, but there are major problems. Only 23% of Kenyans thought that elections are completely free and fair as we headed to the polls in 2022. The Afrobarometer survey further showed that 34% of Kenyans did not trust our election management body, the IABC, at all. And another 23% trusted IBC only a little. Election campaign financing, another, another area under consideration at this forum, is equally of great concern, not just to Azimil or Moja one Kenya coalition party, but to our country as a whole. The growth or otherwise of our democracy is heavily dependent on the kind of election management body we evolve and the rules we put in place with regard to financing of elections. In our country, as elsewhere, we have seen that democracy can, all, can, <laughs> can be on trial, but it can also be on sale. Both jeopardize the stability and progress of the nation. We have to agree that as a country, we have a money problem when it comes to elections. Money is flooding our political system. Money is enabling only a handful of billionaires to decide who becomes governor, who gets into be a county assembly representative, a member of parliament, and even decide who runs and who eventually sits at the state house as president. Democracy being on sale to the highest bidder. They see the system is already rigged by the money. It gets worse when finances come from outsiders and with a known and undeclared interest in the leadership of our country. Stringent and fair rules on campaign financing is particularly important in a devastated economy like the one we have in our country. A situation where a few have the money often corruptly obtained while a massive majority live in squalor puts that poor majority absolutely at the mercy of the rich who are seeking elections. It makes for very unequal contest and leads to a very undemocratic result. We have no option but to come up with legislation that will create public funding for elections that give ordinary Kenyans a louder voice and enables them to compete with the rich and the powerful. We need laws that force people to disclose who their donors are and where their donations come from. We need to extend such transparency requirements to public corporations and force them to disclose the money they spend in elections. A disclosure rule is desirable 
so that state corporations don't become sources of campaign finances from ruling party candidates. We have heard of wash wash, we have heard of things. How do we go to the future? How will the child, um, Toto Maskini, Kenya he, ever claim to become? Hmm? Of course, William thinks is, uh, he, he came from selling eggs or something. He did his best. But how many more? Now look at the details. Under the framework agreement, we uh, were allowed by Parliament, both houses of Parliament, to constitute this team. Um, and we know we have to get experts. We have to find, these are people we have to uh, make allowance for. So if a hundred million shillings is too expensive, it can be brought down. Uh, but let us really not lose, us, lose sight of the, the bona fides of this conversation. This conversation. And I want to assure you that I'm in full support, and the government is in full support, of successful conclusion of the bipartisan discussions of conservation that are taking place in Parliament today. We want to see something positive come out of it and we will go out of our way to make sure that we also see some positivity through that process. We have a country to defend, to protect, to live in, so we have no intention of walking away from that uh, particular responsibility. And as we look at the elections and we do the review, sooner or later we are also going to make public uh, a draft bill so that there can also be proper public participation and dialogue around it on the issue of transition of executive authority. Because what we have is simply the assumption of office bill, which basically just deals with the ceremony at the end of the day. A committee is set up, they prepare, and they're just preparing for the swearing in of uh, the elected president, and then it's basically done. But transition, and even as you talk of transition in this, in this conversation, transition is beyond assumption of office. We want Kenyans to go further and make sure that transition is not just at the helm. What are the components that need to be dealt with for smooth transition of executive authority. In the last election, we saw things that we have never seen before. As much as uh, we may raise issues about IBC, but we also saw things that we never saw before from political, the political class. We are witnessing things at bombers that have never been witnessed at all. <coughs> but the commission has do not vote. It is the people who vote. So we must also get away from this fallacy of saying that I had four commissioners and you had three or I had three and you had four. There's the famous uh, article what? Two, two, two to three. How do you balance the management of that article within the constitution without paralyzing the operations of government, but at the same time, so that you make sure that uh, uh, an outgoing government is not engaging in a scorched earth policy? of literally plugging everything out of the coffers so that the next government is set up to difficulty.
free and fair electoral process embodies the constitutional sovereignty of the Kenyan people and is the cross-cutting feature that facilitates the ultimate accountability to the people. Transition. We must be aware, be aware that how our governance structure and the electoral framework in particular are contributing to the consolidation of constitutional transformation. The notion here is that consolidation of constitutional transformation speaks to the objects, principles, and the social and economic transformation purposes of the 2010 Constitution. In electoral contexts, therefore, consolidation of constitutional transformation will require that the legal framework, the institutions, and the administrative and operational accountability of the executive. An executive that is neither appointed from, hosted in, or derives indirect agency from the legislature as established in our constitution poses unique challenges. The seemingly absolute exclusion of the executive from parliament begets an unintended accountability deficit, which at present is only bridged by reducing the gaping information hole in the running of government. Whereas the Constitution leans towards absolute separation of powers, it may be necessary to mitigate the drastic consequences of the accountability deficit between the two institutions by providing channels for checks. His Excellency the President has expressed his views on the subject, which views indicate the true and uncontested position of the Kenya Kwanzaa government. Indeed, Honorable Kalonzo, to taking away the lives of electoral officials, or any life for that matter, because of our politics. For reference, the 2022 elections give us a rare opportunity to engage in issue-based political mobilization and discourse. Both the process and outcome of the 2022 general election were credible and met all the constitutional thresholds upon which the standard of credibility is measured. However, the specter of violence reared its ugly head again despite the Supreme Court exhaustively rendering judgment. This conference should work towards ensuring that all election stakeholders commit to uphold higher electoral standards that yield acceptable results, leading to full public confidence and nation building, and not destructive riots.